Today I have a chat about the Canyon Grail gravel bike, which I've been rolling around on for the last six weeks or so. I cover the ins and outs, and yes, I talk about those handlebars. Back in November last year, I attended a gravel demo day put on by Canyon Australia, and they were nice enough to let me take that bike for a few weeks to get to know the ins and outs. So during that time, I hit the trails and roads on that bike with a few adventures. I converted the bike over to tubeless, which I had the approval of Canyon to do so. I converted the set of Favero Asioma road power meter pedals over to SPD and put them to the test on the Grail. And eventually I had to return the bike after I'd cleaned it. So after a few hundred kilometers on the bike, I got to know the ins and outs, the good and the bad. And that's what I'll talk about today. First up, the specifications of the bike. It's a Canyon Grail CFSL 8.0 ETAP. It's the full name of the bike. Canyon carbon frame and fork. Yes, those biplane style double stacker handlebars, which I'll talk about later. It comes with 12 speed SRAM force axis. It's a one by. So with that, you get an Eagle axis rear derailleur you get an eagle chain and force axis levers, and obviously no front derailleur. And with all axis components being intercompatible, or compatible, I think is the word I'm looking for, it all works just fine. So you have the road levers and the eagle stuff up the back changing gears for you. So it all worked just fine together. Uh, Schwabel G1 Byte 40 mil tires back and front. The Grail comes with DT Swiss G1800 spline alloy rims and comes with 160 mil disc rotors back and front and is equipped with what I would consider a very horrible saddle, the Physique Alante R5. I'll talk about that later on too. Price-wise, the Grail that I was on comes in at $5,649 Australian, so $5,649, just over $5,500. Value-wise, it's hard for me to comment on because I'm not exactly elbow deep in bike reviews on the weekly here on this channel, and the Australian market is very limited. An equivalent manufacturer, who I would say would be giant, who come out with pretty decent value bikes here in Australia, don't even bring in any ETAP or DI2 gravel bikes. So it's over to Bike Exchange to have a look at what's on the market and the price ranges for Axis gravel bikes. Okay, scrolling past the top three there, out of the stratosphere of pricing, and we're down to the Cannondale, Cervelo, and another Cannondale. Now these are gravel bikes, ETAP, you're looking at seven or eight thousand dollars there, seven, nine, seven, five for an equivalent bike. This is just very high level specs. Scrolling down even further, Axis there, so you're looking at seven and a half for that. And then as the further we scroll down, the Grail price range, which was five, six or five, six and a half. Actually, we need to scroll even further down. There we go, we're about there. We're into the mechanical group set gravel bikes. So for a very high level quick comparison, the price for the Grail is about the same price as other vendors for mechanical group sets. Hmm. I will be the first to admit I'm no expert when it comes to comparing bikes and value, but that's where I'd start. It was quite indicative of what's out there and what the price tags are here in Australia. Okay, now onto the interesting stuff. The good, the bad, and those bars. First up, the good. It rode like a road bike. It had a familiar feel to it. Out of the saddle, as soon as I jumped on the bike, you thought I could ride it. It was no problems at all, turning, cornering. The size, uh, I sent through the sizing to the team before I got on the bike as a demo and it was good to go, so no problems at all there. I did swap to Dr. Slane's open upper on one of our adventures, just for a few kilometers. That was weird. It wasn't bad weird. It was weird different though, out of the saddle. That handled a lot differently. The Grail handled definitely much like a road bike. The force axis one by was simple. It was up and down. That's all you need to know about a one by group set when it's force. It's just easy to use. Um, simple there. Hydraulic brakes with 160 mil rotors, tons of stopping force, had no problems at all with the brakes there. And the bike hummed along nicely on the flats. Where I live here, I'm two or three kilometers from any gravel and about six kilometers from some hilly gravel. So the bike was used to transit, I guess, over tarmac. No problems at all on the flats. The bike hummed along, probably topped out at around 45 k's an hour on some downhill descents with the gearing that it had. But other than that, not a problem at all. As soon as you hit an uphill, you knew you were on a little heavier bike with a bit more relaxed geometry though. So this thing didn't climb tarmac hills like a road bike, to be expected. On the gravel, on the other hand, not a problem at all. Those gears absolutely flew through anything that I threw at it. And my final note here on the good is the value. My brief research, as we saw before, the bike looks pretty good value for an electronic group set on a full carbon frame here in Australia. Now onto the bad. And there was a few things, but no real showstoppers. Number one, the saddle. 
ooh, swap that thing out. Contact points are always very personal. That saddle got a bit too personal with me. There was no cutout. It's very round after two and a half hours and one of our adventures. Yeah, that thing would go straight away if uh, I was looking at continuing on with this bike. So saddle, go, bad, horrible. Uh, integrated bars and stem uh, adjustment becomes a bit of a problem there. If you want to swap stems out, length and different handlebars, it's all integrated and it's that biplane design. So you're limited there. The head stem on the Grail needed tightening after a few rides, but I'll give it a leaf pass. Well, half a leaf pass on this one. It's still in my bad column. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary there with a brand new bike for the first few rides. And this is why a number of bikes come with a first free service. Take it back to the store or a service center to get those things checked. Um, less than two minutes to fix that for myself. Uh, there's no pannier or rack mounts on this bike. So if you're looking at doing long distance uh, adventuring, you'll need to get Velcro straps. There are small inside bosses that are apparently for fenders, but not for racks. Hitching a kid trailer to this may also present challenges, something I need to look into these days. And the bike only takes up to 42 mil wide tires. So there's limited space there to upgrade to fatter tires. It comes with 40 mil tires, 42 is the fattest you're gonna get. If you wanna go 650Bs or something even fatter again, it's not gonna happen on the Grail. Now the bars and, ah, uh, the bars. They're fine. Look, if you close your eyes, you'd never even know you're on them. They're not really that different. Out of the saddle, sprinting, bike handling, no problems at all. Do the tops offer more sponge or more comfort when you're flying across some uh, rough grounds? Not really, to be honest. If I was on any rough stuff or some serious gravel, I was on the hoods, wanting more control of the bike for gears and also being close to the brakes. So in that respect, meh. One interesting thing though, was when you were in the drops, the little base bar, which is down below, provided somewhere to put your thumbs. Now, that sounds a bit awkward. If you ever get to ride one though, do this. It's a really, it's a comfortable position. So you're down in the drops and your thumb just hooks over the top there and you just ride along nice and comfy. Your, your hands aren't gonna slip down at all. That was probably the best benefit that I could see with those biplane bars. It wasn't being able to load 50 computers top and bottom or the spongy bit at the top, which really wasn't that spongy. It's a little thumb hooks, that's where it's at for me with those bars. But other than that, my personal preference would be to have a standard bar and a standard stem. That way you can change stem length, stem angle, bars, bar width, bar, you know what I'm talking about. I started cycling when things were all unintegrated and that's where my preference still is. The hover bar catches the tension of people who would probably be never looking at gravel bikes anyway. So it inspires people to comment, be it positive or negative, and that's how the internet works. So it's content interaction just with those bars. Regardless of where you stand on those bars, Canyon have your attention and that's what they want. So in conclusion, my overall take on the bike, I liked it. It rode like a road bike, but you could take it anywhere. You could just point it in a different direction. I rode it grass, gravel, trails. There was some single trail there, which probably it wasn't suited for, but I took it over anyway. It went fine. I forgot about the weird bars after a few rides. They're just a non-issue once you're riding around with them. I was reminded, however, of those bars on every single Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook post that I put up whilst riding that bike. Again, Canyon had your attention. And the final question is, would I buy one? I'm still in the Hmm, category on that. I did spot the Canyon Grail AL 7.0, which is about half price. I'll put it up here on screen. It doesn't come with SRAM Axis, uh, has Shimano GRX Mechanical, but after riding the top end Grail, I'd really like to get on one of those and see if that handles the same. If it does, I could save myself half the money. And I also need to get my hands on a few other test rides. So I'll be over at Sea Otter coming up in a few months. Hopefully I can jump on a few more gravel bikes over there and then I'll make a decision. So there we are, my take on the Canyon Grail CF SL 8.0 ETAP gravel bike. If you're in Australia, keep an eye on the Canyon Australia Facebook page to see where they're holding demos next. I highly recommend throwing a leg over one first before diving in the deep end. For me, hmm, I think the hunt still continues. As always, hit thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and hit subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated. We'll see you soon.